Hey what's up guys, Totally Dubbed here and today I'm going to be making an installation video for the Antec Cooler H20920. So I'm going to be installing it on my Asus Sabertooth Z77 which um, has a LGA1155 socket, so it's an Intel socket. I'll be installing it with the stock Antel, Antec fans. I just want to mention that I had to remove it um, from my motherboard previously so as you can see the adhesive strips are no longer adhesive um, if you do um, end up in this type of situation all you have to do is call up um, Antec uh, or send them an email and they will send you um, a brand new uh, backplate and or adhesives, uh, adhesive strips so just going to go through quickly of the things which I include, obviously is the Antec 920 there with no thermal paste, usually it comes with thermal paste pre-applied, I would suggest getting it off and putting your own thermal paste. Um, then you've got the Intel mounting kit, like so. You've got the AMD mounting kit, this is the back plate, remember this is the front plate. You've got the fans. You've got the screws which are for the fans to the radiator, long screws like this. You've got the back plate, on the back plate you've got some bolts which go in and you get to screw in your screw from there. You've got um, washers. These washers are actually typically used for the radiator. Uh, I contacted Antec about these, these are metal radiator, uh, media, metal washers, so I wouldn't suggest putting these on your motherboard. You've got this plastic ring, which goes around the Antec, I'll explain that in a little bit. And you've got two different types of screws. Short one and um, a long one. The short one's used for AMD, the long one's used for Intel. So, that hopefully you can see that. So the long one is the one you want to use. So let's put the AMD stuff to the side. And finally, you've got these little things over here. And they come apart. Like so. You'll get them like this. And they basically go into each other like that. And I'll show you in just a second how that works. Right. So I'm going to go... Uh, down towards the PC and uh, first of all what you want to do is um, put in uh, the back plate so I'm gonna first um, do that and uh, I will show you the process of doing that so as you can see I've got uh, my Asus Sabertooth everything is done up and so you can see over here just here you've got the uh, I've got my stock Intel cooler on there so you can see where these points come out around there. I want to mention something before getting into this. If you have a serial number over here, I highly suggest getting the serial number off carefully and sticking it to another portion of your motherboard. Because when the adhesive strips go on, and obviously as you can see, it rips, it can rip the serial number. And in my case it did. And if you rip a serial number, uh, <laughs> it voids your warranty. And it's stupid of Asus to have put it there, but I suggest uh, you guys moving uh, moving it off if you're going to put use the adhesive strips. So what I'm going to do is remove the stock Intel cooler that I have on there. Right, so there is the stock Intel cooler. So what we're going to do is first of all unplug it and open up these. So as you can see, here is the stock Intel cooler. So there we go. So I changed position so that you guys can get a clear view of the processor. What I would normally suggest is to remove the processor and clean it uh, whilst using um, a anti-static uh, wristband. Um, however, my CPU, I'm just going to leave it in there and clean it off it, which is perfectly fine as long as you're careful. Um, so basically just take a paper towel you know, one of these uh, kitchen kitchen roll things. It's fine. Why you do this is because you don't want two TIM applications uh, together. So 
usually your Antec 920 will come with a um, with a tim on on the Antec cooler itself, and therefore means you can straight away apply it to your processor, meaning you don't have to add any sort of um, extra thermal compound. However, I would suggest using your own thermal compound because I found that the um, normal compound used wasn't that great. So once you clean most of the paste off with a um, with a tissue or a paper towel, there is still some tim on there. Now you can't really see it due to the lighting. Um, maybe well, you can't really see it, but it doesn't have this shine, and you want it to basically shine. So I'm going to use our uh, Arctic Clean and I'm going to just put some on my tissue and I know normally they say put it on the say the CPU or whatever but I actually found it's much better if I just do this let it soak it a little bit and then with that wet side just clean it once you clean it you'd want to dry it right there we go now for those which say you shouldn't use that while you're in the CPU you're, you're correct in saying that because as a CPU it could short out the CPU but you're gonna have to clean it somehow and I just use it on the socket I find it's the easiest way to do it without actually um, causing any damage to any components so once that is clean um, now I had my Antec 920 it is obviously clean um, so unlike yours it'll be kind of different but that is basically the CPU ready to be uh, installed with uh, the Antec 920 I will apply paste I'm using the Arctic MX2 thermal paste and I will be applying paste on that but after I um, get ready to uh, put the cooler on it because I don't want the paste basically sliding around on the CPU while I'm doing uh, my dirty work. So now back to the back plate. So there we have the back of the motherboard and so now you've got your back plate. Now on the back plate there are markings as to where um, which one corresponds to which. Well I mean by that I mean sockets. So I'm going to try and shine a light on it so you guys can see uh, my camera won't well hopefully you can see that it says 1156 1366 775 now in my case the 1156 and 1155 LGA sockets share the same um, sockets um, the way they're positioned is the same it will look odd when it goes mounted up here so if I want to mount it on Obviously you're going to put your adhesive strips normally. You don't have to put adhesive strips by the way, but I would suggest putting adhesive strips because normally you won't have to um, get it out, but you'd put it in like so. And you basically want to align the hole so it's matching over there. Now you'll be able to notice that it is not completely straight as you can see you can see that's going straight down and it has an angle that is normal that is completely normal so don't worry about that now going on to these little bolts you wanna put them in normally you'd slide them through so they stick out like so and then you put it in so the reason I was showing you that is just so that you know how it's supposed to be positioned and how it looks like before actually doing it. And I'll get on to the application the Antec 920 into the back plate. So there we go. Once they're all in, like so, you want to attach it on. So these basically slot into the holes of your CPU mounting holes and if it sticks, which it will with the adhesive strips, it will just stick in place very very tightly and there you go so now 
I'm going to take you um, to the front, um, the front of the uh, the motherboard. Right, guys. For after having the back plate in, what you want to do is, as you can see, you can see these markings out here, and this is the back plate. What you want to sh make sure is that when you put this in, because we're going to put that in in just a second, that you have these things correctly put on. And they're quite simple on how they go. They basically click into place. Let me zoom out. So in my case, they go on the outside, like so. This large bit goes on the outside. In some cases, you'd be like this, but usually it should be like that. In terms of um, clicking them through, they go in like so. Now, if you'll be able to see, my top bit over here goes into where it is shaped like so. It's curved inwards like that. And it goes up. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is put it on to our thing and to our socket. So you position that there and click it through. There we go. And as you can see, it's positioned correctly. So what I'm going to do is do the rest. Right, so once they're all attached, what I suggest is that you put it on your motherboard in order to see if the whole you can see that screw bit. Now in my case I know I can see them all. Like that. And let me try and bring you in. So as you can see you can see the screw bit sticking out. like so. So you just want to ensure that you've got that right, that's the only reason you do that. Because you're gonna have to remove you're gonna have to remove this. In old installation guides and in some old um, uh, Antec guides, paper guides, you'll have an old installation guide. What we're gonna do is now put this to the cooler directly. So I'm gonna um, go and show you the cooler now. Right, so here's our cooler as you can see nice and clean and shiny now this is the tricky bit and this is the bit that's not explained what you want to do is position this to go in and to click into place as you can see it goes into the grooves of the Antec also do bear in mind that it's it's gonna look a little wonky if that makes sense because as it goes in you can see that as that's straight the plate isn't it's a little to the side, so that's how Antif designed it, but if this was a little bit to the other side, it would have worked out perfectly, but that is how it mounts onto your CPU. The CPU would mount like that, directly, and you're basically going like this on the CPU. So, just thought to show you that. Now this plastic ring clicks into place with quite a substantial amount of force. So you can see over here, what you want to do, doesn't matter where it goes, you want to basically click this into place. Now it does take a little bit of force. There we go, that's one side in. What I could also suggest is doing it with a screwdriver or with your finger, pushing down on the clamp. So for example, pushing it through, there we go. 
and now that is fully fastened. As you can see, I'm putting quite a lot of force there. You can't take these two apart. So that's when it's mounted on the CPU, it won't be able to come out. So now you've got your cooler, you've got your wires on the side. What I would suggest doing next is putting the screw bits in here. They basically click in, like so. And now you've got a ready to mount Antec 920. That's shiny. <laughs> Before we mount it, we're going to do two things. First of all, connect up the fan. Connect, uh, sorry, attach the radiator to the case with the fans. Apply some tin paste. Usually you'll have it normally, remember, um, with the Antec. But as I said, I would put my own tin paste if I were you. Um, and then put this on. So this is the last thing that you want to put on. So what we're going to do, all I'm going to do is now um, install the Antec um, radiator with its fans. The configuration I'm going to go for is going to be a push-pull method. Push-pull means, this is the radiator, it's pushing air through, one fan is pushing air through and the other one is pulling air through. That's what they mean by push-pull. If you have a push-push configuration, it's pushing air through the radiator and then pushing air into the radiator again. So it's basically that. So, no, sorry, not like, sorry, not that. Push, uh, it, it basically, in other words, you want to try and do push-pull configuration. Pushing air and pulling air through the radiator. That's, that's the way you should do it. Not pull-pull or push-push or whatever it is. Also, the directions of the fans. Now, the directions of the fans, um, by Antec, it is recommended that, because I'm mounting it over here, it is recommended as the air goes outwards. So that means it's, um, pulling air through from your case and pushing it outside the case, if that makes sense. However, I've been contact I've been in contact with um, Antec support, and and this is known by people as well that if you pull air from outside the case, obviously the outside the case is going to be f um, cooler than inside the case, you'll achieve better temperatures. That is completely fine to do that, but what you have to make sure is that you've got some sort of um, air pulling it out. So in my case, what I'm going to do is pull from here, pull cold air from the back, push the cold air through the radiator, and the uh, radiator obviously gets warm and the uh, second fan over here would be pulling the warm air and the warm air will be exhausted as they say from the top AF140 that I've got installed over here so push-pull configuration going into the case and basically the airflow will be going in like that and outwards like that I've got airflow coming in from there so I've got air coming in and from here so air coming in from here like so and air leaving from here. That's what I would suggest to do. So as long as you've got a fan over here, you should be fine. What you should monitor is your case temperatures. If you've got no thermostat, it's fine. Just let it be, um, let it run for whatever your hardest intensive, um, say game is or benchmark is or whatever. So if you're folding or whatever, and then open your case lid and then just, just put your hand in around here and try and see how the case temperature is. If it's too warm, if it's just warm air wafting somewhere, you've got bad case flow, and so you have to change your way that your fans work or how your configuration of your radiator is. Right, so now that's explained, so I'm going to explain something else. Something I always check. It is quite obvious though, but I'll have to show you anyway. If I am able to find it. There we go, <laughs> full circle. On the side of these fans, you'll have arrows. The arrow going left or right, say this one's going left, shows the direction of the blades, which way they'll be spinning. In other words, they're going to be spinning like this. And the other arrow is the most important one, is where the air will be going. So the air is going that way. So if I'm doing a push-pull configuration going into the case, I want to do it like that because the air will be moving this way. So as you can see, the Antec logo, there. So it's taking air from this side, pushing it through the Antec logo. 
So right, I'm going to go ahead and install the radiator. So what you want to do usually is pop in these screws. There is something else that I didn't um, quite mention, is the reservoir. Now the Antec 920 has a reservoir, and here's the reservoir. It is recommended to have the reservoir facing at the back of the case. By that, it means that... Just put this here. There we go. By that I mean... My case is facing that way, so this is the bottom of the case, this is the top of my case. You want the reservoir facing at the bottom. The reason you want this is to prevent air bubbles from occurring. Now, air bubbles basically could cause, um, well, it's just, it, it, it decreases the way your, your Antec works. Now, there's no problem mounting it the other way around, but if you hear bubble noises, quite literally bubble noises, then you will know that it's because of the radiator. Um, also, there's another thing I should mention regarding the radiator, is that for the first time you ever start it up, because the, the pipes are dry, if that makes sense, the um, radiator is going to make a really loud noise. It's going to brrrr, The pump and the radiator will make a really loud noise, brrrr, literally like that. Now, don't worry, that is kind of, that. well, not kind of, it is normal because it's never been run before. Just give it five minutes and let it run. Do monitor your temps while this is happening because sometimes it could be your pump's not working. However, often it's just a case of shake, shake and bake. So, shaking the reservoir will, um, will eliminate that. This happens in water cooling as well, and in fact it does happen in water cooling, you have to clear the bubbles off the tubes within here. So you just have to bear that in mind. So do, um, do remember that because it will um, come into play, uh, or might possibly come into play for you um, if you are going to, um, if you're going to be well, if you want, if you're wondering about the sound that's gonna that's gonna occur. Right. So next, putting in this fan. And note what I've done with the cables. I've left them at the top. The top two of the cables over here are at the top. Right, so now I have fastened it on, I'm just going to tighten up the screws. You don't need to do it too much because the fans are going to just stay in place. And there we go. So now we are ready to put in our Antec 920. So, what we're going to do is, what I do is um, position this upwards and hold the back plate from one angle and push through the Antec 920. Before I do that, in my case, I'm going to apply some Tim on the CPU. And the method I'm going to use is a line method. You don't need too much. Some people prefer the pea-sized um, thing, some others prefer the cross. But I use the line method because that's the die. The die on my i7 goes down like that. Um, by the way, I should mention it's the i7-377OK. So there you go, that's, that's how it goes for me. So now I'm gonna change position. Right, so as you can see, I've changed position. Um, hopefully you're getting enough light. I've put a light over here. I don't know if it's going to give you enough light to see, but as I know, it's a very dark case, so it doesn't really help. Uh, but I haven't got any light over here around me. But as you can see, I've got the Tim application in here. I've got this Antec pre-prepared. Um, just give it a last little clean. Make sure it's nice and nice and shiny, as you can see. On my Antec 920, I should say that I had a little scratch 
on the on on the copper plate. Um, I didn't do that. That's how it came. But um, I mean, that's that's what I presume. That's how it came. So now you want to try and apply it. So first of all, these wires keep them to one side. And now I'm going to place it in. So first of all, I suggest using your hand. I have my other hand on the back plate, just to let you know. Basically, we're not using a screwdriver just yet, because it's much easier to work with our hand. That's what she said. Okay, so there we go. We've got the Antec screwed in with our hands, and now we're going to get the screwdriver. Now, what's interesting to note here is that when you go with the screwdriver, I would suggest putting your finger on the back plate on the metal bolt of the back plate. So I'm going to do the first one like this until it basically stops. And to tighten it a bit more what you can do is push and put your finger on the back plate so in order to stop it from turning. So you don't want it to go too much. Now I'll take you from to the back and I'm going to do this one right here. So as you can see, if I push, the screw can come out, So uh, the bolt, sorry. So just screw until you basically can't screw anymore. You can screw, and it's a bad design in this respect because this is plastic and this is metal. So if I screw, this thing starts to round over here. But the, re the reason they've done that is so that you don't over-tighten over it, which um, makes complete sense. So now I'm doing the bottom one. There we go. Now this one. I actually did quite a good job with um, with my hand. <laughs> oh, the dirty in your windows. Right, so there you go. Now all of them are screwed in. Take you the front over here. So as you can see, the Antec 920 is well screwed in. If you try pulling on it, it shouldn't come out from any sort of direction. It shouldn't be loose on one end or anything like that. Just make sure everything is really tight. Try doing it with your hand a little bit more if you want. Just see if you can tighten it a little bit more. You shouldn't be able to because your screwdriver did it. And there you go. Last but not least, we have got the cables. So I'm going to go back to putting this on the floor. So with your Antec 920 you'll get three cables basically coming out from the cooler. You've got this cable which is on its own. You've got another one with two ends and you've got another one which looks like this. Now this is a USB cable, this is the CPU fan header and this is the um, fan splitter. So, first of all, we're going to connect the USB up. Make sure you get it right, like that. And plug it into your USB header, header, sorry, header, <laughs> of your uh, motherboard. Now, I'll worry about cable management at a later date. So it looks pretty tidy anyway. <laughs> Might I add? Right, so now we've got these two fans over here. 
Now, on my motherboard, the CPU header is called CPU fan. Hopefully you're able to see, but the CPU fan header, it's called, it, it's basically marked on your motherboard as CPU fan. It should be pretty obvious to be quite honest, um, you, should, you should be able to distinguish that. So what I'm going to do is plug in the Antex CPU fan header into my my motherboard there we go and finally you have these two cables from coming from the fans it doesn't matter which one you plug it into to be quite honest because they're both controlled basically the four pin four pin fans, four pin PWM fans and this um, fan header is PWM as well. So usually I plug in the first one into the one which has four pins and then the other one there. As I said it doesn't really matter because it's all controlled by the software so you won't have a problem with that. And there we go. And that is the end of the Antec 920 installation. As you can see we've got it plugged into the CPU fan header, we've got the USB plugged in, uh, we've got the fans connected up, we've got the radiator connected, we've got the radiator reservoir towards the bottom of the case. The case is like so. And you've got um, you've got the Antec 920 mounted on correctly over there. So what I'm going to do is do a bit of cable management and then I'm going to plug it in and then show you as it boots up. Alright guys, well I've got it connected and I've got it connected to the power supply but it's not on. The Antec light will come on and will actually stay on um, as long as power is inside it. So what I'm going to do is switch it on. Can you hear that? Right, so could you hear that noise, that um, like washing type noise? Um, that is normal. Uh, basically, that is your pump um, making noise. So straight away, I'm going to quickly open core temp. Just make sure the pump is working. Perfect. So, as you saw, as I connected it, the, um, the cooler had... Uh, had just installed on the USB wouldn't be bad if I connected to the internet so now I'm connected to the internet so here are my temperatures now what I'm going to do is open chill control which I think I have yeah, chill control V5 in this case and via chill control you'll be able to check your um, your liquid temperatures, your fan speed and your pump speed what you want to make sure is your fan control over here so this is your liquid temperature now this is a huge difference, there's liquid temperature and then there is um, CPU temperature is a difference between those two, huge difference. CPU temperatures, as you can see over here, and this is my liquid temperature. The liquid temperature really would no long would no would not go over about 49 Celsius. Now 49 Celsius, I got to 49 Celsius after <laughs> quite literally 80 hours of folding. If people don't know what folding is, um, it's basically you donating your PC for research. And by God, that <laughs> that stresses your PC quite a lot, more than any stress um, program can basically do it. Some people say 
are you you're stable on your overclocking but are you um <laughs> or can you can it fold so it takes it up to 49 so 49 celsius was the hottest liquid temperature but my temperature over here was 92 celsius so there's a huge difference and that was um, overclocked so what i'm going to do as I'm on stock voltages, I haven't changed anything. I have got temperature readings with the stock Intel cooler. Uh, and the stock Intel cooler whilst folding, and folding does vary, so I have to leave it for a while. Um, I got to about 82 Celsius, 81 to 82 Celsius, pretty much on all the on all the cores. So right now, as you can see, I'm on 20, 28, 29, 27. So here are the current ones over here but let's just let's just leave cpu temperatures to a side at the moment and just concentrate on the software so the fan ramp is basically when the fan will start moving so you can see it's 600 rpm right now but it'll start moving and by that it means moving is like oh look it's getting hot i need to i need to change my speed and it's going to change it i've got it to 35 the full ramp i've got it to 40 so if my temperature reaches 40, uh, 40 Celsius in terms of my liquid temperature, um, my it will go to full ramp. And full ramp is... That is full ramp. <laughs> so as you can hear, it sounds like a jet engine. So there you go. So that is full ramp, and that's what it will basically do at full ramp. So I highly suggest creating a custom profile, and this will basically come about, I mean, your fan control over here will be basically judged on your CPU. So don't go by my things at 3545, although it's normally a good indication, but what I would suggest is that you have it um, so that your um, your temperatures are correspondent. So I I know I knew before that when it was 35 I was you know I was getting kind of warm 70 Celsius and when it was getting to around 90 Celsius I really wanted it to ramp up so that's when it was hitting 40 Celsius in terms of um, its um, it's a liquid temperature. Now I think I'll have to change these. I'll go probably to 40, 45. Um, simply I've um, delidded my CPU, uh, meaning I get better temperatures. So it runs generally cooler. Um, so it will run generally cooler, but the cool, uh, the the Antec 920 will probably just still go up. As you can see, it's already gone up to 27. So that's just normal. So anyway, that's based on that. Now. Enable liquid temp notifications, I highly suggest including that because that just basically means uh, shows if your pump has stopped working. So I highly suggest that. So I've put it to 45C and tolerance of 5C. Um, you can enable fan speed notifications, but I don't really like them. Um, it, I, I find it kind of pointless because if I've got the liquid temperature, it's it's good enough. If, if the fans don't work, my temperature is going to soar high, uh, both li liquid and CPU. And over here you can um, you can um, see your options. So I'll start minimize, run on startup. There we go. Change skin. You can change the skin of it to ocean or night. Um, enable logs, um, statistic, whatever, and lighting. So the lighting you can literally customize the lighting. And by the way, you can have Fahrenheit as well. The lighting is the lighting of the Antec 920. Now the color it's shown over here. Even my camera can't pick it up properly. This is kind of dark blue and. I've actually got like a light blue right now. Um, it looks lightish blue. I mean, it, it's light. It's between borderline blue and purple right now. But um, just bear that in mind. So when you come to adjust your lighting, try and do it accordingly and try and checking into your case and seeing what it is. Remember, if you have lighting enabled, when you switch off your PC, your light will still be on. And I, I don't know why, but I did um, ask uh, ask around and other people seem to report the same thing. So I don't know why Antec have done that personally. I don't know if that's motherboard issue or whatnot, but uh, it stays on. But anyway, guys, that is um, everything you need to know on the Antec 920. By the way, this software comes with the 920, but doesn't come with the 620. Um, you can install uh, Chill Control, um, Chill Control um, online, so that's no problem. So um, do just do bear that in mind when uh, when I when I'm saying that this the software is for the 920. But as this is a 920 um, guide, um, I'm gonna keep it um, in there so people have a reference. 
Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, what I'm going to do is, actually, I'm, I'm not going to end the video right now. I'm going to let it fold um, and I will get back to you guys with my temperatures after it's been folding for a little while. And so that you guys can see the temperatures of um, the Antec 920 after it's been folding. So, um, I'll see you guys in, in several hours, but in a couple of seconds in the video. Hey what's up guys, um, and I'm back. So I've been testing for about 24 hours straight basically. And um, so I just want to show you the temperature difference. I just want to, I did a run of IBT, uh, so it's 10 G flops. Uh, but I was folding for 7 hours beforehand, as you can see via real temp over there. And so this is with my Antec 920 cooler. Let me just bring you out over here. The Antec 920 cooler installed, um, and I'm running on stock. Um, so 3.9 um, gigahertz is the max and I just wanted to show you my temperatures so the temperatures as you can see the maximum it ever reached was 50, 55, 56, 52 from real temp and on core temp you've got 50, 55, 56, 52 so there you go just wanted to show you that so there were my temperatures after basically 8 hours of folding just want to show you other pictures and screenshots I took Here's another one which shows a slightly higher um, via the Antec, what I, uh, the temperatures I had via the Antec, as you can see a 58 max in that respect. And here's uh, another picture, um, this was again 58, that was 3 hours of folding, this was about 7 hours of folding. Um, and this is the stock Intel cooler, and the stock Intel cooler hits 82. So, as you can see, there's a huge temperature difference between the stock Intel cooler and the Antec 920, and this is on a stock um, i7. I should mention that I have de-lidded the i7. Uh, de-lidding is when you basically cut open the, the, the IHS from the PCB, and um, that improves temperature significantly. But you can see the temperature difference, basically 58 versus 82, both de-lidded. You can see there's about 30 Celsius difference in between the two, which is huge. And obviously that's 100% load. So let me, if I just, if I just show you Task Manager, you can see right here. As soon as I start folding, you'll be able to see how the CPU um, is used. There you go. As you can see, straight away used, 100% uh, usage, and the graphics card as well, although the graphics card doesn't um, really affect any performance but just to show you it is being loaded on as well so quit you will be able to see these things just drop you can see the temperatures are 42, 47, uh, 47 and you can see that drop and then look at the temperature difference 25, 30, so yeah. Right guys, I hope uh, this um, full uh, installation guide has helped you. Um, I did try and cover everything uh, I could imagine or things I came across myself. So um, hopefully, uh, if this was of help of you, please do subscribe, um, like and leave me a comment. I know it was a very long video, but I thought just to cover everything and anything, it's very good to explain it um, very thoroughly. Alright guys. Totally dubbed out. Take care. Bye-bye.